Well, I'm not working on any bikes. Mm. I would rather be working on bikes. Uh, we thought it'd be a good idea to go over some of the basic tools that we use here in the shop. You're the best Paul here at the shop. You know that? There's right no, here. there's no Paul better Hold than you. Second. This is a um, clutch holding tool. You can kind of use it for a variator too. Why are we doing e-bikes now, John? Okay. Okay. Listen, all I want to hear this. I brought in one e-bike, and you yep. would think everybody lost their minds. First, it's first the of many. I might not be able to be on videos. I can't handle my mouth. <laughs> Paul's got this week. poop that's been going on all day. Seal pusher tool. I wouldn't say this is an absolute requirement. It's just a nice piece to have. We do a lot of RC ones here. This is just something I machined down um, out of Delrin on the lathe. This is going to save you hours and hours and hours of time. To my dear beloved family, maybe we don't know each other but we do feel your happiness and pleasure when you read these words. Most uh, companies in Portland don't work on the Chinese bikes anymore. I've heard I've that heard you're one. you're actually a really bad person. I should probably stay away from you. You hit the like button, right? I mean, that's like kind of what children do is hit the like and react and smile uh -huh. and cry. Well, well, no. Why are you such a child, Paul? Yeah, no, I would probably sue you if you did that to me. Really? I'd, issue, I'd file for a lawsuit. You guys know he is quitting to become a hairstylist. Follow his dreams. I'm adding, like, feel. Working on here, pal. Well, I'm not working on any bikes. Mm. I would rather be working on bikes. Uh, we thought it'd be a good idea to go over some of the basic tools that we use here in the shop. Um, not just what we sell, but what I personally use when building bikes, um, diagnosing and whatever. It's taken a little bit of time to figure out exactly what you need. Um, every year, it seems like you add kind of a few things to your arsenal. Um, but there are a lot of tools that are pretty inexpensive that make a really big difference. We'll kind of go over just what's on the wall here that we can kind of shift over to that stuff all just came out of my toolbox. But we'll start with a really common one, gasket scraper. And you guys have seen these in our videos as well. Hey, Paul, you mind grabbing that? You're the best. You're the best Paul here at the shop. You know that? There's right no here. there's no Paul better Hold than you. Scooter swap shop, pull, please. Paul's the best. Thanks, Paul. You've got a, uh, looks like a stainless steel scraper, and then you have brass as well. Brass is going to be a little bit softer. Um, but you can get replacement tips for these as well. They're a little spendy, but they're really nice. And this is for keeping the flat surface for scraping gaskets off. So pretty much every time we take a motor apart um, or transmission or whatever, this gets used. It doesn't have to be a Motion Pro. It just has to be a gasket scraper. You can use a razor blade too, um, but oftentimes they break. It's a little dangerous and it's not as strong and you don't have as much control because you're kind of holding the flat blade. These um, discovered a couple of years ago. These are really nice for doing jetting, carb cleans, anytime you take the carb apart, it's really nice because you just open this up, take your fuel line, clamp it shut, and then you slide these up, and that's gonna keep fuel from flowing through. So it's just a clamp. Um, these work on coolant lines as well. Uh, there's some larger sizes. We had a three pack somewhere, but there's larger ones that work on coolant lines. So if you wanna, you know, on the twin, if I wanna change a pump, I can clamp it off before the pump, clamp it off after, change the pump out, put it back together so you don't lose all your coolant. So I use these every single week. And then next, this is a um, clutch holding tool. You can kind of use it for a variator too, but basically this is going to um, hold on your clutch to allow you to take that nut off. So whether you're using a, you know, a, um, a socket like this for your clutch nut, or using a crescent or whatever it is that you're using, this will lock down on that clutch so you can hold on to it. Oftentimes I'll actually take the clutch, put this on the clutch, flip it over, and I'll chuck the nut up in a vise and just grab this handle, just turn, and it'll loosen it. So this will also work on a variator as well, or a bell, so you can hold on to a bell to impact it loose. Pretty handy tool, pretty inexpensive. As we go down the line, I mean, this is pretty basic stuff. You've got a spark plug wrench, which is a necessity um, on pretty much any bike that's any two-stroke. Don't really need it so much on a four-stroke to carry with you, but these are really nice. Almost every one of your bikes should have one. Tire pressure gauge, you guys all know what that is, of course. This tool here, um, clutch holding, clutch nut tool, 
39 millimeter and that's for the uh, the nut on your clutch. So verify the size, there's a couple different sizes. So really nice to have this guy as well. And then you've got a, a combination um, variator clutch holding tool, that's for Azuma. These are kind of some really common sellers that we have. I'm trying to think if there's anything else on this wall. Not really, these are the most common items that we're going to sell and use in the shop. All right guys, so as you've seen, we're doing something we've never done before. We gave away the bug eye. First part of May, we'll do a video and an announcement on who won. We're also giving away a pre-bug. <music> to win, you need to be subscribed, but how else? You gotta click on the information above in the corner to watch the original video so you can enter to win. And don't worry, we're doing more giveaways soon. Why are we doing e-bikes now, John? Okay, okay. listen, all to I the hear world, this. I brought in one e-bike and you yep. would think everybody lost their minds. First, it's first the of future. many. No, it's the future, guys, okay? okay it's Karen. gonna be all e-bikes. You will never even see it, a motorbike again. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's like a, it's like a front like tire. It's super, okay. Okay. I, so I might not be able to be on videos. Still... I can't handle my mouth. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's like, it's one bike. It's a front tire. Don't tell your friends because we don't want a whole bunch of them, but we'll do what we can. Nice. Yeah. Did you notate the tear, torn rear seat? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's What's up? Uh, first of many e-bikes to come out. Paul, now John's going to take Paul's got this week. poop that's been going on all day. Uh, Just yeah. back here. I think it's because I didn't get the stuff in far enough. So I, I put stuff in my hair sometimes. Paul to make puts stuff. He just goes, and then goes. No, on here. No, I actually, I have like actual hair product. Oh. However, and I use it sometimes. Sometimes I slip. You got to make it messy up top. It's practically a motorcycle. No, it's not. It's practically a motorcycle. It has pedals okay. like a bicycle. If it's it didn't have pedals, that you could say what you're saying. But it's literally a moped. All right. It's literally a so moped. Don't go uh -huh. telling the world. All right. Shh. Those are onyx, bi onyx bikes are pretty cool, though. They're pretty cool. Yeah. yeah They're yeah. supposedly supposed to go like 65 miles yeah, an hour. Yeah, he said it was quick. Yeah. So. Yeah. Has no rear brake whatsoever. It yeah, has a, a rear brake when you're ha going. You has don't a need to stop. Has a mountain brake, but remember, it, it's probably got regenerative braking. Oh, true. So the the motor but probably you breaks. You squeeze it all the way, and the wheel still turns even when it's stopped. So that's kind of sketch, but. Super sweet. So going over this, um, we don't really have any surfaces that are open right now because everything has a bike on it, but I can go over the kind of my basic hand tools and what they're for and what um, what can be helpful to you working on bikes. First, we'll start off with a multimeter. You know, you can spend upwards of, you know, two, three hundred dollars on a multimeter or just get something cheap. Uh, this is gonna show you continuity, voltage, AC, DC. You can check current with this guy as well. A little bit tricky to use for the first time if you've never used one, but this is absolutely necessary for charging systems, check to see if switches are working, um, you know, check to see your battery voltage and all that good stuff. So these are, are a must if you're gonna work on a bike. With that as well, is a uh, this is a test light. What this is gonna do, this hooks to your ground on your battery or frame, and you can use this to touch terminals, see if they have 12 volts to them. Remember, this is only gonna do you good when checking for voltage. Hindsight, you can also hook this on the 12 volt and use this to check ground. You're just creating a, you're just basically creating a, a circuit here with this. If you don't have any power to your bike, you don't have any 12 volts, this is completely useless because it's, it's showing the difference between positive and, and ground basically here. So really cheap, five, 10 bucks, really handy. Definitely use this more because this is gonna tell you um, way more information, of course, continuity, you know, what direction of ground and hot's going. So you can switch the leads around, it'll say positive or negative, however you have the leads. So um, that's, that's a must. That's pretty much all you really need for electrical side of it. As far as um, working on engines, all this other stuff is gonna apply. Seal, pusher tool, I wouldn't say this is an absolute requirement, it's just a nice piece to have. And it's sized for, one side's for small, one side's for big, and we have these for Yamaha Zuma. So this is just going to um, evenly put pressure on the seal when you're driving it in. So you're not trying to work it around one way or the other. Again, I wouldn't say it's a requirement by any means, but it's a really nice thing to have. We do a lot of RC1s here. This is just something I machined down um, out of Delrin on the lathe. What I've done here is created 
one side to drive one bearing in because um, we heat the cases up, drop bearings in, and this can push one bearing in. This size is to push another bearing in. This size is to push another bearing in. So Delrin's nice because you're never going to mar the cases. You're not going to damage bearings. So Delrin's nice. So oftentimes, if you have access to a lathe or something, you can make some pretty handy little tools that, that help you. Um, that's not something we sell. It's just something that I've made to help um, with all the RC ones a week. And then I kind of went, went over this already. They make these impact sockets in different sizes. These are really handy for getting your clutch nut off. And again, Motion Pro sells them, um, but it's, a, it's just a common common size. You can get different ones for your clutch. As far as the uh, little hand tools go, obviously your Phillips and Allens and all that stuff, that's kind of just um, basic hand tools. Flywheel pullers, depending on which one you have, they make cases that have all the assortments, but Honda, Yamaha, GY6, almost every bike is gonna use an internally threaded flywheel, so you'll need one of these to get your flywheel off. And what made me think about this is somebody called saying they're using a three jaw puller to take a flywheel off, and that's got the three jaws on it. Everybody knows what they are because everybody's dad and grandpa had them laying around in their toolboxes, right? So it's got an internal thread and it clamps to the flywheel and you thread it and it pushes to pull that off. Your odds of damaging your flywheel on that, if you have an internally threaded style, are probably 80% because if it's on there tight, the stress is gonna bend that flywheel and crack it. So don't use those and it oftentimes doesn't work at all. Flywheel pullers are 10 bucks or something like that. We've got tons of them here and they're, they're cheap. They were perfect. One impact, it pops right off. This little guy here comes in really handy. Let's say a customer's got a you know, bad crank seal or something like that. Oftentimes you can kind of get in by the crank, wrap it around the seal, pull it out. Um, or if you're working on a C-clip or something like that. I have had these in plastic. They don't seem to really hold up very well or fishing something out or whatever, but I use these often for C-clips and little tiny, tiny things. If you got a ring that gets stuck, you can pop that ring out and whatnot. So these are very handy. Exhaust T-handle, this is for like pulling springs on for your exhaust, whether it's, you know, at your header section or silencer, center stand or whatever. These are definitely a must. Clutch springs too. These are very handy, very cheap. This is another style of uh, crank seal puller. And I've got a couple different ones that are actually like a coil and you twist them and they kind of screw into the, the crank seal to pull it out. Again, you can use it on your axle seal. Um, any seal that has enough meat on it, you can get in there and you can basically poke a hole in it and thread it and pull it back out. I don't have the best luck with these because it seems like the diameter is just almost a little bit too big for most of what we're doing. If it was a little smaller, it would definitely work better. So that one is good to have, but I don't use it as often. Uh, next for some other tools that um, I wouldn't say are required if you're just doing onesie twosie, but if you're doing a good amount of building and whatnot, uh, I don't know why John ordered one with a 60 foot cable, but uh, God bless his soul. Inspection camera. Again, don't get the Harbor Freight ones because I've had them and they literally last like six months and they break. I've been through three. These work really good. Basically, if you're working on a bike and you want to inspect a cylinder without pulling the whole bike apart, you just shove this down the spark plug hole and you can kind of move it around to take a um, kind of inspect the internals of the bike without taking it apart. So this comes in really handy. Again, I wouldn't say this is necessarily a, a um, really high priority item, but it does come in really handy. They're about 120 bucks and they you'll end up using it way more than you think that you would. Next is a heat gun. If you're doing bearings and seals and everything, well not seals, but bearings, um, heating your cases up to drop the bearings and you can heat the cases up. Uh, get them nice and warm and then we take the bearings, put them in the freezer. You can literally drop the bearings right in because the aluminum expands a little bit and the steel's cold and drop it in. So this is probably used two, three times a week. Helps for basically breaking anything loose as well. Um, so heat guns are, are pretty important to have. It's, it's a must in the shop. Uh, you guys probably know what this is. This is a crank pusher. So this is going to mount to your, you know, uh, your ignition side or your CVT side. It's gonna bolt and then gonna bolt your motor and then this here you're gonna thread in and it's gonna push the crank out of the engine so once you have your cases uh, unbolted you bolt this to your motor you thread it in and it's gonna push that crank out so if you have a crank that you want to salvage and save this is what you want to do to be able to push that crank out without damaging it also not a bad idea if you have one that's really difficult uh, not a bad idea to put the nut on the end of the crank because oftentimes if you're impacting the crank or if you're impacting this it's really hard to get out this is gonna be rotating on your crank possibly, and you could kind of mar up those threads on the end. So good idea to put a nut on the end of your crank before you use this. This is not gonna to apply to everybody, but this is uh, basically to set timing on an MBT HPI, any uh, inner rotor ignition system that has adjustability. This is gonna thread into your spark plug hole, 
and it's gonna tell you basically how to advance and how to set it. So if you're not doing adjustable ignitions, not needed. If you are, 100% have to have this tool. Again, not, not a critical one by any means, but if you're doing a lot of ignitions or even one, you have to have this tool. It's my little homebrew, homebrew case here. So anytime I build a motor, this is kind of what I, my toolkit that I start with. This is your crank puller. Everybody, most everybody knows what this is. Your crank and your nut are gonna go right in here. Just to pull the crank into the case, you're gonna thread this and it's gonna draw that crank into the uh, into the case itself. So you're gonna put this here up against your uh, crank. Your crank's gonna stick through here and you're gonna tighten this up and it's gonna pull that crank into the engine. So anytime you install a crank, this is, this is necessary. There are ways of like, heating up your bearings and freezing your crank. I personally don't like heating up the bearings that hot to get them to expand, drop a crank in. So this is, they're about a hundred bucks, they're not too bad. Then you've got stud installation tools. So these have a ball bearing on it. These are nice because when you're threading studs into your cylinder or anywhere, you're threading them in and you have a ball bearing spinning. So then you just loosen it up and it just comes right off. So these are you know, M6, M7, M8, um, M10, pretty common. I don't use these as, as much, just when you're doing studs. This little handy thing here. So uh, actually it's funny about this is it, a uh, customer shipped up some motor and it came back and busted the porcelain off. So I just use this as a, as a, to plug the motor. So if I'm storing it or whatever, obviously you can just use a regular spark plug, not a broken one, but it comes in handy if you're storing the motor or whatever, just to thread something in that way, debris or whatever doesn't get in it. So not, not really an important thing. So pressure test kits, most of you guys know about. Some of you guys have, have, are, have been asking about these. We have more coming. COVID drove the price up two or three times for these things because they're medical and made them hard to get. So um, we had to take the price up because these, these tripled, I think, in price. But that's gonna pressurize your motor. If you call, if you guys do a motor build and call us and say, hey, my motor's doing this, doing that. First thing I'm gonna ask, say, did you pressure check it? If you say no, then we really can't help you figure anything out because if your motor's not sealed, Two-stroke motor's not sealed, there's no way to tune it or to get it right, you'll always be fighting it. So if your motor's running hot and or running erratic or you can't get it tuned right, good chance you have an air leak. Really, really common. And we have a lot of videos on air leaks type scooter swap shop air leak. You'll see a bunch of them once, how to use it, what they do, where your air leaks are found, what they cost. So the air leak, the pressure test kit is gonna consist of basically a little bit more, but these are your main components here. So you've got a exhaust block off plate, which we stock as well. Um, you've got a piece of rubber silicone that's gonna sit over here like this, bolt to the cylinder, the exhaust. This is gonna go into your intake on your bike. You're gonna put your spark plug in the hole just to plug that area. You're gonna pump it up and you're gonna watch that gauge come up to tell you, to show that it's holding pressure. It's making sure that your motor's sealed. Um, vital thing to have if you're building motors, especially if you're building motors for people, you can, you can kind of make this stuff, you can home make this stuff too if you don't want to spend the money. This is gonna save you hours and hours and hours of time. Um, and if you build a motor for somebody, you, you, you cannot help them tune unless they get one of these. So otherwise you're gonna spend a ton of time trying to help when they may have a giant air leak. That's kind of my kit that I pull out um, anytime I'm doing a motor. A couple other tools that, you know, I'm, I'm just pulling out the things that we kind of mentioned over time to customers. This is called a blind bearing remover kit. What this is gonna do is essentially a slide hammer. It's just got a heavy weight on it. And what you're gonna do is whatever size bearing you have, say you have a, a wheel bearing in your bike, you're gonna thread this guy on here, loosen it up. You're gonna thread it on. You're gonna put this inside the wheel bearing and as you thread this on, you guys can see these, these gaps here. But as you thread it on, you're gonna expand that and it's got a lip here, and that's gonna grip on the inside of the bearing. So once you get it nice and tight, and you tighten these down, and you see how much that's expanding, it's putting pressure on the inner part of the bearing, it's gonna hold the engine down, or wheel, and you're just gonna hammer it, hammer it, hammer it. Paul, he's like, does this kind Paul, of, Paul, Paul likes this, to hammer. Well, he, his, his hammers are like, he's like this, right? What, Paul? So what I, what I typically do is if you have a, a, you know, you set it on the tool bench and you hit as hard as you can, and if you can't get it off, what I typically do is set like two, two or three cardboard boxes or something dense or like a moving blanket, and I'll actually take the wheel and I'll swing the wheel down as I'm pulling this up to create more of that force and they typically pop right out. That's where the heat cutting comes in handy too because you can heat the, the wheel itself to get that aluminum to expand to pop that wheel bearing out. This is, um, it all depends on what your time is valued at because if you're doing wheel bearings or you're doing transmission bearings, if you don't have a tool like this, I mean, you could spend a couple hours trying to get a bearing out where you could take something out with this in 
five minutes. Mm -hmm. Also, tools like this, you can also rent or just borrow from somebody. This is something you may not use all the time, but when you do need it, you do need it. The next uh, tool here is a compression tester. So most of you guys should know, you've got all your different adapters in here. Um, and you're gonna kick the bike or, or turn it with the starter. This goes in your it goes in your spark plug, right? You hold it wide open, throttle, let the air in the bike, and your gauge is gonna come up higher and higher and higher. More often than not, I see people that will say, hey, my bike's got 40 pounds of PSI, 40 pounds of compression. It is not, it, it runs, but not good. I see a lot of gauges that are not meant for small motors and, the, and on our scooters, they'll never read more than 80 or 90. If your bike runs, and you're showing less than 75 or 80, your gauge is probably wrong. I see that quite a bit. I had a Honda Gyro that ran okay, and I checked it and it said it was like 60 PSI. I thought, okay, that, that seems weird. Checked it against a really good running brand new bike, two stroke, and it read like 55. So I knew that the gauge was wrong. Got a gauge made for small motors. I don't know if they have a different check valve or whatever in them, if you know, let us know. But both the bikes were like 110 to 125 with the right gauge. So keep that in mind if you get a gauge and you run it and your bike is running. Apparently, rule of thumb is you need like in the 90s PSI compression to have combustion. Uh, so if your bike is running and your gauge is showing, you know, 30 to 75, your gauge is wrong. That this will help you to where you don't spend a bunch of money on parts you may or may not need. Um, for instance, a customer came in with a People 50 and I said the first thing we're going to do is check compression because the bike's dying when it gets warm and the cylinder expands, everything expands. If he has low compression, it's going to get really, it's going to get low on power, right? So this tool allows us to, rather than invest a bunch of money in a carb clean and, and other stuff, we can do this right off the bat. Okay, the motor is good or it's not and if we can go one way with it or another way with it. So this essentially will save the customer money because we can give them a general kind of health checkup on the bike. These are kind of the, you know, there's welders and die grinders are really good to have. Um, but just kind of working on motors and bikes in general, I would say these are probably the most common, smaller, you know, kind of, you know, all this stuff, you're probably looking at maybe $500, 400 bucks worth of tools or something like that. And they're incredibly, incredibly handy. But this stuff up here, the heat gun, that toolkit down there gets used weekly. So yeah, I hope this kind of helps explain to you guys what you need to do it right. And I can't stress enough, if you guys are putting engines together, don't hammer them, don't press them. A lot of people will press the cases together on a two stroke and you're basically binding the two center sections of the crank, right? Cause you've got the pin in the bottom, you push it and you're gonna, you're gonna bend that crank and then it's gonna stay in that position. You may not be able to see it with your eye, but if you press the, a motor together, take a look down there and I guarantee you when you see it spin around, you're gonna see the cam, you're gonna see the crank going like this in and out and eventually it'll, it'll tear itself apart. So keep that in mind, you wanna put everything together with the least amount of stress as possible. So, anything else you can think of, Pat? Mm, no, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, um, Honda Bond oh, yeah. is considered a tool, obviously. I mean, to me it is. Um, these are for uh, setting ignitions as well. This is kind of like the budget option. I'm not a big fan of these. They're not gonna be as precise as, uh, as using that guy down there. I think that's it. Yeah. Cool. So well. a lot of stuff we stock, a lot of stuff, you know, um, a lot of stuff here, but I'm just trying to show you guys um, common things that uh, that we use here in the shop. So. Cool. All right. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Cool. You yeah. ready? Yeah. <clears throat> we got. I bought something on Amazon and they sent me a very heartfelt message. And let us know if you guys think we should do the same thing. Uh, thank you for walking into my world with sunshine. It's the trust and support and encouragement so that we have the confidence to not be afraid of hardship and gunbuster. I don't know what a gunbuster is. To my dear beloved family, again, this is from, I think, a, like a motorcycle luggage strap or something that I bought. Uh, the item you expected comes to you, family. In today, in today, busy life, we look forward to bringing you more surprises, giving you care like family let your tired soul get a bit comfort. Maybe we don't know each other, but we do feel your happiness and pleasure when you read these words. So let a pass on the happiness and pleasure together. When you enjoy our specially prepared product, please remember to share your pleasant shopping experience. A pleasant sharing will not only spread the happiness to others, but will also record your happiness forever. Or should you feel any dissatisfaction, please contact us and please contact us and let us know frankly like family. 
love you and looking forward my beloved family <coughs> uh, this is from Zo Sunny okay um, it's really heartfelt it uh, seems like the translation is probably I'm a bit choked off. up a little bit because I, I feel like I'm family with this person now so I'm glad that we have uh, less gunbuster as well so, uh, we should give it to somebody we should give it to <laughs> Trevor <laughs> we cross it off and write Paul and then we're gonna put it in somebody's box put it in Trevor's okay Tre I don't know if he's ordering anything today yeah it's really special <laughs> Thank you, Zo Sunny. Appreciate that. Dang, we have no Paul in this video. Paul's in here. He's hustling. Yeah, he's hustling. What, I'm what saying we have no about? Paul in this video. What are we talking about? Oh, we were talking about tools earlier, and then Brandon had this heartfelt. I'm looking at the biggest tool in the shop. Shop online. Looking at Brandon? Rude. The camera. Oh. Do we repair what? Repair. It's a 2002 TNG Venice. Uh, yeah, we don't do any Chinese bike repairs, unfortunately. Uh, you know, anybody that would. Uh, most uh, companies in Portland don't work on the Chinese bikes anymore just because uh, there's too many problems with reliability and, and, uh, and whatnot. So I, I would forward you somewhere if I knew of somebody, but I don't, unfortunately. I have no idea. I, I mean, I couldn't diagnose. Him. What happened? Oh, so there's this person who doesn't like me. So I'm gonna try to find a good scammer to give his number to. Yeah, I've I've heard that you're you're actually a really bad person. I should probably stay away from uh -huh. you. Yeah. Um. So I'm actually like a really horrible person. And I'm a bully, mm -hmm. a cyber bully, and um, because some other things. You're a cyber bully because you click like on people's things. I, well, and, I like and laughs. I and like and laughs. I laugh and at, cares. I can't, so I hit the care button when I, I see a post I care about. Uh -huh. I hit the laugh button when I see a funny post. Uh huh. I hit the angry button when I see a post that makes, makes you angry. angry. So you're, just, like a you, post, you're like sharing it. your emotions. Yeah, I'm okay. just putting my emotions on the okay. post. Okay. Okay. Right. That's what, so. If you like a post on Facebook, like you look at the post and you're like, "Wow, I read this post." And you like you're like oh that's a cool post I like this post. Do you hit the like you hit the like button right? I mean that's like kind of what children do is hit the like and react and smile uh -huh. and cry. Well, well, no. Why are you such a child, Paul? Yeah. No, I would probably sue you if you did that to me. Really? I'd issue, I'd file for a lawsuit. For what, what if what if I hit bowling. what if I hit the care button? Because I care. Because about that's me. even worse. Because I know you're lying. Well, I'm not lying. How do you know? Do you want me to put me on the, the test that, like... The test? The test that, like, hooks up to your arms It's and called Cyberbolt. We should buy an old... We should buy a used lie detector test. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think they're a lot more expensive than you think no, no, they would no, be. No, they're not like that anymore, are they? They probably have some... 100% they, they, they are. they all digital? No. no. But, like, the old ones, like the suitcase? And uh -huh. Yeah. I've watched many videos recently on them, actually. Expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah. God damn, Brandon bought a lie detector test. Brandon bought a lie detector test. We're just going to have to have refinance the, the building. Every day, you're just going to have to come in. Paul, you need to take lie detector tests. <laughs> <laughs> Did you eat pizza? You'd be like, <laughs> sweating. You'd probably like break the screen, like jump out. Paul, I, I, thought, I thought somebody was supposed to be taking care of your hair. What happened to that? Oh, yeah. Right? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been like two months. Has it been that long? Yes. If it not more. Look, it looks like it hasn't grown at all. It has oh, grown. it's grown a it's lot. Grown a okay. Lot. Let me, yeah. Give, give me some length, Paul, in the back. Pull, pull it out a little bit. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Dang. Gross. Yeah. What? Nothing, just the, way, the way you looked at me and the way you, and you see your hair. <laughs> okay. There's like a woman how she like looks at you and she's like doing her hair like this, looking up at you. You probably wouldn't know what that's like. But it was just, it was weird. You, I, the way well, you look I, at me. I don't, but I know what you're saying. It was the way you looked at no, me. No, 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 you shouldn't look at me in that way. I didn't, you were looking, move. You were looking yeah, at me, bro. Paul. This is a t nice, tight, close work environment. Here. I want to know why this table's back here suddenly. Because we have no room, because we're or full, full of parts. So what do they need to do? Buy, buy more, more parts. No, they're no. buying more, but it's like we... No, buy more parts so we can buy a building that's bigger. And, uh, and another another desk just like this one for this side. And another person. I no. really think... Who do you want people? No. Hmm. Uh, I think we have plenty, plenty right now. If anything, I think we need less people. <laughs> 
Wait, you trying to get rid of me, Paul? Paul's actually, if you guys don't know, he is quitting to become a hairstylist. Paul's dreams. Oh man, I would uh, definitely. Paulie's cuts on uh, so Instagram. Bad. If he cuts hair like he holds a camera. <laughs> I'm having like feels. In the this mm. customer left us a tip, so yeah, so we gave him some free. Stuff. Gave him some grips. We gave him a CNC keychain, some stickers. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm.